Hi, my name is John Cooksey and welcome to the Digital Mixer Companion Volume 2. I'm really excited to be back and to be able to show all the users out there, whether you have an MX-1012 or AVE-5, some really exciting and nice new effects to do with your digital mixer. So let's get right down to it and start with the first effect. It was a dark and stormy night. I had been sitting up for hours not being able to stop thinking about how to do it. How to mix a color image on a black and white background in the same scene. I'd seen the top studios do it and I knew it took thousands of dollars. I also knew that somehow, someway, we must be able to simulate that same effect with the digital mixer and do it cheaply. I had to figure out the answer. I also had to figure out where was that weird music coming from? I couldn't find any other place to practice. Do you want me to cut it out? That's when it hit me. I had to cut it out. The color, that is. I knew now that this case was no longer going to be black and white. Then, making sure I had an extra one, I took the SVHS cable that went from my source player into my mixer, and then I proceeded to cut it, stripping away the black shielding and exposing a red and white what inside. The next task was to get rid of that annoying cotton braid, whose only job must be to keep the wires from perspiring. Having done all this, I stripped off the red coating on the red wires, pulling back the shield. I then ignored the white wires and reconnected the red wires. I also reconnected the shield that went along with the red wires. But once again, we left the white wire out to hang. We didn't need it anymore. Now we took our specially modified cord and reconnected it. We also connected another output from our source player into our mixer. Having a black and white and color input on the mixer, we were able to blend and dissolve between both of these, giving great effects. What you're about to see is some of the results of our experimentation. We give no names to protect the innocent. You know, one common misconception about the AVE-5 and even the MX-12 is that they're not good mixers for doing three, four, or five camera shoots. Well, that would make sense, wouldn't it? I mean, after all, there's only two inputs. But wait, there is a way around this, and that is using a multi-input switcher into the AVE or MX mixers. Now, let me explain. Right here, you see a JVC mixer. This is the JSX-900 Super VHS 7 input switcher. Well, the beauty of the seven input switcher is it has two outputs. Because this mixer has two assignable outputs, you're able to take any of seven inputs and put them into the two inputs in the AVE mixer. The advantage with the AVE mixer over the MX mixer is it creates its own sync signal. Creating its own sync signal means if you disconnect one of the inputs, the other input stays fine. So all you do is take a mixer like this JSX 900, take your seven inputs, divide them up into the two outputs, which will go into the inputs of your AVE-5. If you have an MX-12, every time you switch an input, you might get a disconnect of the sync signal. So in order to do it with the MX-12 or MX-10, you would have to go from camera one to camera two, back to camera one to camera three, and keep camera one on your B input, 
as your sink source. But the beauty with the AVE 5 is you don't have to do that at all. So you can take your up to seven inputs, go into the two outputs of the, this mixer or any other mixer like it. This seems to be one of the best ones. Go into your AVE 5 and switch between any of these cameras, not interrupting sync. Now this is how you take your AVE 5 and make it a multi-camera switcher. Something like this mixer discounted goes for about um, six to eight hundred dollars. But again, it'll take your AVE 5 and make it a phenomenal switcher. You can even bring in videotape, video disc signals, or anything else you need. Here's two suggested systems for live multi-camera switching. The heavy-duty system at the top, and on the bottom, the light-duty system, which will cost you less but gives you less options. Hi. Welcome to choose o vision where you will choose our host for our next digital mixer segment. Please make your choice by touching either the A or B on your television screen. You may only pick one. Please make your choice now. Please touch either A or B on your television screen. Make your choice now. out there I've got a terrific idea if you haven't thought of this one already it works great what you do is you get the bride and the groom and you ask them to give a message to the bride and groom it works terrific here's an example I've known Rob for a long time and he's a really great guy so I wish him the best of luck in the whole wide world and I know he's got the best bride in the whole wide world and he better be really good and remember that Christmas is one holiday and the wedding's another holiday. <laughs> gifts, 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 gifts. That's all she's talked about ever since we got married. But that's okay. I still love her. I'm very happy to have her as my bride, and I wish the best of luck to the bride, but she's got one heck of a catch, let me tell you. What you're seeing now is a floating shapes animation. You can use this as a background or to dissolve it halfway into a background for a nice effect behind titles or a square wipe in the middle with a picture or whatever reason. You can make it yourself with the MX or AVE mixers by taking your mixer and setting a background color in one of the inputs. Then you want to disconnect the second input to give a black background. Now you want to make a shape using your white mode and white buttons. Slowly move your positioner and slider to achieve the desired effect with one shape. Next, take that master tape and put it into the source machine. And don't forget to reconnect that input you might have disconnected. Now you want to repeat this process, making your source background for you to superimpose another shape of another color onto, using your slider and positioner again to change the size of the movement. You'll want to flip-flop in this manner a few times until you've achieved an animation that you like. If the black background is showing a little multi-generation loss, or you want to change the background color, then make sure you use the superimpose effect on your mixer with the back color button on to rekey in a new black background or to rekey in a different color. There's a lot of different things that you can do with this background. You can even combine the background we have here with the background you make for even more interesting effects. Good luck and have fun experimenting. Just keep in mind, a lot of what you see in video is illusion. We interrupt this regularly scheduled video to bring you the special edition of Fight Line, now in progress. Well, you see, Mr. Kroppel, our process basically involves taking videotape and simulating the 60s on videotape with a series of dots and scratches and tinting, which is Excuse very popular me, with our Mr. commercial Kroppel, 1990 audience. This is me, Moonbeam, over here, and I have to tell you that it's impossible to recreate the 60s. 
I am the 60s. I embody the, the 60s. What you are, okay? I am full of love. You know what you're and full peace. of? You're full of we. Harmony oh, okay. and and oh, Moonbeam, the 60s I are over. So Why don't you go back to getting chased by police and playing with your Even though you are beginning to irritate 60s, me a lot. Well, the 60s are over. I can I mean, you use still think that you're, negativity you know, and still feel a positive flow. And I want to you know tell you that crazy. the 60s you're are crazy. not over. Yes, they're over. I am, Why don't you go back to the 60s the are not and start over. Don't you, you tell me to oh, sell. You're losing I'm going to praise now. Ooh, um, um, oh, real cool. I know. Now, you can only push me so far. I don't want to hear any more of this talk about. We interrupt this segment to bring you behind the scenes of the Fight Line set. Fight Line, of course, was done in one room, and we added a yellow background color using our digital mixer and white patterns. We used the Amiga computer to overlay our boxes and title. Both of them combined together gave us the results that we wanted. Now, if you don't have an Amiga computer, you can do this as a two-step process. First, recording with the yellow background or edge around what you're shooting, and then keying in the fight line, which we provided on this tape. If you have an Amiga computer, it could all be done in one recording pass. Here's another way to do it very simply by using a vertical bar to simulate the two-camera, two-studio effect. Remember, in television, perception is the only reality. What you're looking at now is a setup suggestion for hooking up your Amiga computer and Ginlock in line with your digital mixer and your source and record VCRs. Now, this is our way to do it. You may have a different way, but we find that it works best to go from the digital mixer to the Amiga computer and Genlock and into a separate input of your Record VCR. Usually, Record VCRs have more than one input, and you can switch back and forth. This will allow you to take your Amiga computer and Genlock in and out of line anytime you want with a flip of a switch on your Record VCR. This is especially helpful if you don't want to go through your Amiga computer all the time, such as the case with my setup, where my Genlock is composite, and the rest of my recording signals are YC. My input 1 is the YC signal, and my input 2 is the line or composite signal. We find putting the Amiga computer in Genlock after the digital mixer allows the strongest, most stable signal for going into the Genlock, giving us the best results. Even though it may look like it, I did not teach college in the 60s. The secret is out. The scratches on the tape are an Amiga animation, but you can also do it without an Amiga. First, the raw tape. And the rule of thirds would apply that I'm sort of on that third. The rule of thirds also eliminates people doing that crosshair dive bomber technique where everything's dead in the center. You don't want everything dead in the center. The last five seconds of the section you just saw we're done with the AV-5, though they could be done with the MX-10 or MX-12, using the animation supplied right here. We could take it right off this tape to key it in behind, or it's actually on top of, the video that you have using your superimposed function of your digital mixer. This is just like the process described in keying in a title that we showed you how to do in Digital Mixer Part 1. If you have the Amiga animation disc, you can key it in a little easier and the lines will look a little thinner. It depends on what your tape is and what machines you have. The orange tint was added with a orange background color and our fade control to get just the right amount. Let's review the process for you right now. Right now, here's a background you can use for any wipe or dissolve purpose. And it's also included on our Amiga Animations disc.
Attention brides and grooms, save money, save money, save money. Let Uncle Charlie videotape your wedding day, and what a thrill you'll feel. You're spending thousands on special days, so year after year, you'll be able to look back on Uncle Charlie's video. After all, you haven't skimped anywhere else. Save a few bucks on something you'll watch every year. Uncle Charlie will work for free, and he's worth every penny. Just think of these moments you'll treasure forever. The lovely and memorable taking of the vows. Just those silent movies you love so well. It's a ceremony you'll remember thanks to Uncle Charlie's steady hand and state-of-the-art camera. He covers the crowd in one graceful motion, and he's even got autofocus. So relax. Why worry about extra batteries, a tripod, or even lighting? Because Uncle Charlie loves to shoot in the dark. And then the all-important cutting of the cake. You'll enjoy every moment thanks to dear Uncle Charlie. Plus, as a special bonus, you'll most likely get 26 minutes of food. Uncle Charlie's shoes, wonderful silhouettes, six full hours of video on one tape, and that special artsy blurry look. So why get this? when you can get this free from Uncle Charlie. Just think, after spending all that money on your wedding, look what you'll have to show for it. A video everyone wants to see once. A sure cure for the worst insomnia. Yes, for years to come, you, your kids, and your grandkids will know your decision was with Uncle Charlie. So remember, Uncle Charlie will save you a few bucks and give you a memory you'll never forget. <laughs> We now attempt to solve the never-ending debate on what is the final on-screen difference between the MX-12 and the AVE-5. To do this, we ran video through both machines onto separate Super VHS tape, from which the same frame was frozen. The only, repeat, only difference between the left and right sides of your screen was that one side was run through an AVE-5 and one through an MX-12. Please make your choice now. You have 15 seconds. What if I were to tell you the right side was the MX-12 and the left side was the AVE-5? If I were telling you that, I wouldn't be telling you the truth. So right now, let's reveal the answer on which side is which. Remember, a lab test is one thing, but the final output from VHS on someone's TV is where the viewing counts. One popular trend these days in commercials and movies is to show a person in various activities over a period of time in one setting. Now we did this here using a camera on a tripod with no edits, but a dissolve between a still shot and the same shot live. Unfortunately, I had to be in the shot staying still to run the digital mixer, which was in the frame. Normally, you would just do this with one person. Uh, this uh, particular kind of idea has a lot of applications, whether you're doing special events or you're doing industrial shoots. And right now, we show you how we do it by only half dissolving. I told Annie when she was all ready to move, and she had told me when she was all set for me to bring the slider up all the way. Doing a creative scene like this can really add a lot of pressure to your talent. But the advantage to you is, as a videographer, it'll save you a lot of editing time. Removing most of the vocals from your stereo CDs or tapes is not hard once you know the secret. You'll need three sections of RCA cable as shown. You'll be stripping the yellow and red wires as shown, taking the positive tip from the red wires and connecting them to the tip of the yellow and to the shield of the yellow, leaving the red grounds loose. This next optional step will allow you to dissolve in music with the vocals so you can decide exactly how much you want to take out. The following example of audio removal shows our main Y connection going through audio input source 1 and the headphone ground output through auxiliary input. Either way you do it, it doesn't matter. Let's take a look at how it sounds. Like I promised, we have a new Super Duper Starfield. This one's created by Michael Du Bois from Gilbert, Arkansas, an associate of mine who does fabulous work. He also puts out a tape and some animations on disc called Eye Candy. 
and we're going to show you another one of those animations. Both of those he was nice enough to provide for our Digital Mixer Part 2 Amiga disc for those who have Amigas. For those who don't and want to use the animation right off VHS and are afraid the resolution is just not that great, well, use your superimpose function to rekey in some new black around these stars here, and you'll find it'll give an exceptional look to it. I'm going to pop up Mike's name here at the end. For those interested in more fancy animations on disc or tape, well recommend his eye candy. He can even do custom animations for you, and he's a real nice guy. Right now it's time to show you how to get those fancy fog effects for your video productions without having to buy a fancy fog machine. You know the professional fog machines use something called fog juice and basically compress it and spit it out which is great if you want big billows of clouds. But if you just want a nice fog or eerie effect you can do that without actually buying the machine and the secret lies in this stuff called fog juice. It looks like this and it comes in quart containers for about $14. You can heat this stuff up yourself, and when you heat it up yourself, you can use it for a fog effect. Basically, all you need is some kind of hot plate kind of device to put the fog juice on. You can put it in a little quart boiling pan, and you don't really want to make it boil, but as you see here, if you let it simmer enough, it'll basically create a fog that'll come out, and you can use two or three of these hot plate kind of devices to give you the fog effect in whichever kind of area you're working in. One thing you have to remember about the fog juice is it comes in different flavors, or should I say smells. It comes in strawberry and orange and pita colada. You don't really want those because let me tell you, when you're around this stuff for uh, just a few minutes or more, it really gets to you. So try to get the unscented fog juice. I'm going to put up on the screen a couple of sources where you can get fog juice. We found out the hard way through our experimenting that fog juice, just like with corn syrup, can catch on fire if not heated right. If you don't think this could happen, take a look at our footage that was taken during our experimental phase of heating a fog juice. We tried stupidly lifting a full boil pan away from a gas stove. Congratulations to Alan Nelson of Galesburg, Illinois. He's the winner of our best effects from our Digital Mixer Companion Part 1. He did a three-minute piece called Fascist Beat, a satirical song written and recorded by himself about the state of the music business. He used an MX-12, and the shadow box order was added by us. What you're seeing is an edited version of his final product. Don't need no satisfactions. Don't need no art abstractions. Don't need no fake attractions. I've got that fascist beat. Don't need no jack flash. Don't need a hit by the clash. Don't need reruns of mash. I've got that fascist beat. Now, since Alan is a professional wedding videographer, he has won one of our professional wedding videographer t-shirts with the Uncle Charlie symbol in the back, plus a digital mixer companion part two. Congratulations, Alan. Provided for you here on this tape are the shadow boxes. For those of you who bought the Amiga disc, you can take them right off the Amiga disc. For those of you without the Amiga, you can grab them right off this tape. And if you need them for a longer period of time, just use your still frame to store them and use your white function buttons to bring in a square that's equal to the black square in the middle. Good luck and have a great time. What you're seeing here is footage done 
with a 450 camcorder and a light on it, most of it done at weddings. And as you can see, you can move through the crowd very evenly. The secret lies, again, in the viewfinder that tilts up. The tilts up viewfinder and under your arm shot is gonna be the secret to a good steady cam technique. Now what you're gonna to wanna to do is tilt up the little magnifying glass in there so you can see nice and evenly. And then what you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna walk with the camera, and I'm gonna walk in this direction just to show you. And you're gonna walk nice and steady, one foot at a time, looking down through the viewfinder, occasionally looking up at what you're filming. Now the other secret of the steady camera technique is being able to stay wide angle. Staying wide angle will give you that fluid, smooth motion as you walk with your camera. Viewfinder tilted up, magnifying glass up, under your arm cradles, walking independently, if we can pull back a little here, of your camera movements, okay, which means if you're going up a step, you don't want to jump up with your camera, you want to step up and then slowly bring your camera up. If you're really good, you could even look up at what you're filming and keep glancing down at the viewfinder like this and bring your camera from left to right or wherever you want to pan. Look to where you want to go, make that fluid motion with the camera, and end up there. All done on a pretty wide angle. And even if you're pretty close to people, they will get used to you being there. One advantage of this technique is you don't have to worry about the natural audio track being interrupted as much as it normally would taking a bunch of short shots. However, you do not, I repeat, do not want to overuse this technique. A couple of times per each event is enough. And don't forget to get the video mixer companion part three. That's great. Digital mixer. <laughs> I don't know that name. We should write it across. Digital mixer companion, right? Okay. Thanks for joining us today on this tape. And don't forget to get the Diddy. <laughs> joining us today on this tape and don't forget to get the video <laughs> I can't believe it <laughs>
and you want to fill in all your frames until you have your digital effect and you're going to push the number four to play it. Also, don't forget to connect the dots totally so you don't get bleed through and to make sure you're in overscan. Tip is to use your F9 and F10 to get rid of the bar overhead and to the side when you're filling in around the background so you get all of it. And this should be done in overscan. This tape is also supplied with some high contrast fireworks which you can use with your mixer to key in, like this, right into any picture. Of course, they can be used, as we showed you in the beginning title of Digital Mixer Companion Part 2, as a nice backdrop for titles. Just because this tape you have is VHS doesn't mean you can't edit it over to a Super VHS or three-quarter master. If you find the resolution or contrast just a little bit less than what you're used to, feel free to use the superimpose function on setting the back color to black or any other color that suits your purpose. You'll find that this will rewrite in essence the background to the fireworks giving you a little more high contrast or a clearer picture. Good luck with the fireworks and happy 4th of July! And don't forget to get the did it. <laughs> I can't do it. This next section is strictly for qualified uh, repair type people only or diehard electronics people. This is the inside of the AVE5. If you take off the top, you're going to see an aluminum board. It's going to have a bunch of holes in it. Look through with a screwdriver, you see labels for like chroma gain A here, which is VR2, or chroma gain B, which is VR10. Um, you have Tint A, which is VR3 adjustment, and another little hole for tint B. Uh, your B channel, which is uh, VR11. The black level, or pedestal A, VR8, and VR16 right here is a pedestal for B. You use a, something like this from Radio Shack. It's a TV adjustment tool to slightly turn to counterclockwise or clockwise to the adjustment that you want while watching a split screen view of what's going on. And remember, it's very important when you adjust these adjustments to only adjust one parameter at a time, one of the channels, to make sure you're happy with it uh, before going on to the next adjustment. Hi, I'm Michael Del Toro of DT Video Productions, and I'm going to show you a way that you can use a computer, an encoder, and a Panasonic mixer to simulate the effects of a Genlock. Now the particular system that I'm using is an Amiga 500 computer, a Digifex VIP encoder with S-Video output, and the Panasonic WJ-AVE5. Let's take a look and see what this can do for us. Now here's some footage from balloon bungee jumping. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take some computer generated graphics and overlay them as we're going, as we're watching some of the jumping here. Now, what you're seeing right now, this is completely done without a gen lock. Some of the things that an AVE5 can do for you is you can change the color of the text that's getting scrolled across there, and you could change the effect of the text. There's a plain text, there's an outline there, different outline, and we have a shadow effect there. Once again, the best advantage of this method is that you can save several hundred dollars. The disadvantages are that you can only use one color at a time unless you go through multiple generations and also you will lose some clarity in the computer graphics that are generated. We took the output of the encoder 
and put it into the B bus of the Panasonic AVE5. We took the other footage and put it in the A bus. Now you need to get to the superimpose effect area. You turn the superimpose effect on, select back color, select the B bus, and we want to place it in reverse so that we'll get the text. The text will be highlighted. You'll set the key level so that the key is almost about at 80 percent, I would say. And that's how we achieve the effect. And now, back to you, John. Hi, this is Annie. Don't I look beautiful on the cover of this magazine? Well, it may not be what it appears to be. You see, after positioning my face, John took a freeze frame of me right in the spot that matched up perfectly with this model's face. It's not that hard to do. You just have to plug your camera or camcorder into your digital mixer. You can use one or two cameras for this procedure, depending on if you want to use still frames. One camera can be set up on the magazine and one on a face. If you have a color printer, this is a great way to make money at fairs or flea markets. With different subject matters such as celebrity photos, exotic settings, or newspapers, the possibilities are endless. And now this could be you. Why don't you grab a freeze frame of it and try it yourself? Under the right lighting conditions, an AG450 camcorder by Panasonic can look as good as an F70 full-size two-chip ca camera. You'll see the 450 on the right and the F70 on the left. The 450 has a little harsher of an image, but uh, the 70 has a softer image. Here we have a little more light, and here we have a less light than the other two pictures. Right now we have the same video, only this time dumped down two more generations, so you can see how the quality holds up another couple generations. The F70 will always do much better in a situation like theatrical filming or bright light outdoors, but here they can come pretty close under controlled lighting. Many of you videographers at one time or another have filmed or are going to be filming a band. Now, it's easy to film a band or videotape a band, I should say. The audio track seems to be the hard part. There's a simple solution for this. Of course, you take the sound off the soundboard and it becomes too wrecked, sort of flat sound. You take it live and you get an echo. Now, the simple solution requires a blend of both. The way to take it off the soundboard, of course, is to take a line out, out of the band's soundboard, which has a mix of all the vocals and hopefully the instruments too. Your live sound can be used with a PZM mic, and you can blend these in your digital mixer under the mic input and the line input to get the right combination. What I would advise you doing is ask the band in warm up if you can do a sound check, then ask the band to stop. While they stop, listen in headphones and see what the balance is like. Ask one of the members of the band to hear. Is there too much saxophone, too much vocal, not enough guitar? He'll be able to tell you with the headphone mix. Then back down and try it again. idea to get even better sound with a band is to use a separate monitor send from the band's audio board. Now this would have to be a band that is miking all their instruments. The separate monitor send has separate volume controls on their audio board for the bass, the guitar, whatever, the vocals, and you can custom mix those going into your line. Again, even though you're going to get a nice custom mix off the board, there's always a flat sound to it. Make sure you take that PZM, a regular mic, within let's say 100 feet of stage and audience to get that live sound and blend it in using your AVE or MX-12. You'll get results as you can hear here. Gun make 
making machines. Clock making machines. And on and on. We, we need, need things by the millions and fast. It was the best genius. and simplest way to well, mic a play or production is with, so believe it or not, anything. one PZM mic on the center front down. stage. Place a small piece of foam under it, and the foot noise is much less than what you'd expect. A PZM mic uses the whole stage as a soundboard, picking up audio from the entire stage. If you are more than 25 feet away from the stage, you'll need a mic extension cord. It's not a good idea to chain two extension cords together because they can start to act as an antenna and pick up radio signals. So if you're back about 50 or 75 feet, how do you solve this problem? You get a small mixer costing about $50 to $100 and put it up front right below the stage. The PZM goes into the mixer and then you take a line out from the mixer with a 50 foot roll or more of coaxial or other type of shielded cable with RCAs on both ends. Hook it into your system on line or source in. You won't have to worry about radio interference with a line level signal traveling long distances the way you do with a high impedance mic level signal. To have volume level controls in the back of the room your video equipment, the line input from the mixer up close to the stage can be plugged into the auxiliary or source input of your digital mixer and then plugged into your VCR. Remember, headphones are a must for monitoring your audio signal. We're gonna change the world with things by the millions, things by the score. A photo montage can be achieved using your digital mixer by taking a split screen, recording it, taking that image, running it from the source deck through your mixer again with a third source. Now it's hard to line up the pictures, but if you pre-plan beforehand, which we didn't here, you can get some nice shots. We also added the picture in a picture after one more generation later, and as you can see, the images still hold up in Super VHS. Right here, what we did is we still framed and bounced back and forth. Your still frame could be very advantageous and keep adding in a layer after layer, and a montage can be really excellent background for titles. Even though you're ping-ponging back and forth to get more sections of video, if your video quality is high to begin with, you won't notice that much generation loss. And don't forget to get the digital video mixer <laughs> that character generator plugs in the MX-10, 12, or AV-5. You want to know if it's worth it, right? Okay, well, I'll tell you, I can't tell you. You have to make up your own mind. I'll tell you this much, though. It's got four colors, it's one font, a few pages to store the information and flip through. I'm going to put it up on the screen now, you know what I mean? If you think it's worth it, you buy it. If you don't think it's worth a couple hundred dollars, get you home. Do your generation of characters some other way. Here it is for you. Now the letters, you know, they're not exactly real smooth, but I could say you get what you pay for, you know what I mean? We now take you to the studio with our questions and answers session called Ask the Digital Mixer Companion. A viewer writes in asking, Dear Digital Mixer Companion, should I use my digital mixer to edit with all the time or just when I'm doing special effects? The answer is as follows. Of course you're going to want to use your digital mixer when you're doing special effects. However, when you're not doing special effects, it's really a matter of personal preference. If you have a source tape that's dark and grainy to begin with, you may want to leave the digital mixer offline because you may notice some additional noise on the screen. However, if you have a source tape that is clean to begin with, and you don't notice any additional noise on the screen when your digital mixer is online, then you may feel okay about leaving it on. It really is a choice that's up to you. You may want to make a couple test tapes 
to see what happens on your screen with your digital mixer online and what happens with the digital mixer offline. That way you can make an intelligent choice on your own. If it makes the picture worse, you're probably better off not using it while you edit. When in doubt, leave it out. Hey you, it's me again, the digital mixer spy. Listen, I, you can't tell anybody, but I got some secrets for you and some free things, okay? For you and you only. So get a pencil and paper. You'd be stupid not to, you know what I'm saying? The first one is, this number I'm gonna give to you is a number for the video marketing newsletter. Now, these people put out a newsletter, okay? His name is Bill Myers who runs the thing. to tell you everything to do if you're thinking of putting out your own instructional videotape or any kind of videotape, you'd be crazy not to get it, especially since if you tell them the digital mixer spy sent you, he'll give you an issue for free. It's a fantastic newsletter. You'd be crazy not to get it. I'm gonna give you the number now. So here it is. Okay, now that you got that one, I'm gonna, this is a special message for you wedding videographers out there, okay? Some of you already subscribe to wedding videography today, but I'm telling you, if you don't, you're crazy again, because it's a fantastic magazine for wedding videographers and for wedding videographers only, okay? I'm gonna put up the number. The editor's name is Roy Chapman. Again, a fantastic publication. If you're doing weddings, you really gotta have this and tell them the Digital Mixer Spy sent you and he'll give you an issue for free. That's right, I told you, for free. Here's the number. Now, for you video entrepreneurs, okay, or whatever, whatever you want to call yourself, you know, you think you make money and all this kind of stuff, there's another newsletter out, it's pretty new, it's called Video File out of Florida. Here's the number, once again, what do I tell you? Tell them the Digital Mixer Spy sent you to get an issue for free, Video File Newsletter. Some of you people want to get into broadcast, you know, broadcast, three-quarter, beta cam kind of stuff. You want to get into that kind of stuff, you may not be able to afford new, you may want to get used, used stuff, you know what I mean? I'm gonna put up a number, Joe Reinhardt from Composite Video, he'll give you some free technical advice if you tell him that me, the Digital Mixer Spy sent you. He deals in broadcast, so don't call him up asking him about some VHS consumer deck, you know what I mean? Just if you got a question about broadcast stuff, pre-owned, he's a good video broker, he'll set you straight. Joe Reinhardt, here's the number. Okay, what you see here, this is the Elite Video, that's our company, Mobile Studio. It's called the Personal Video Studio, and uh, it fits an AV5 or MX12, two 5-inch monitors. You put a monitor on top. We got a special safety belt feature that keeps all your electronics, including your monitors, safe and the front cover closes down there. You can even lock it up. This is great for live switches if you're doing weddings, theater jobs, you'll look real professional. You know what I'm saying? You don't have to worry about nothing on the job. And uh, it holds everything in real nicely and one person can carry it. You can even put a small VCR in there. And in the back, we got a special place for plugs. AV5, MX10 or 12, and you can order it through us, Elite Video. Man, I think I hear somebody coming, so I gotta get going fast. But real quick, I got a couple more numbers for you, okay? You wanna sell something used? You, you wanna advertise it nationally? It costs money, okay? It costs a lot of money sometimes to advertise nationally. Not with TV technology. Some of you know about that magazine, some of you don't, okay? Free magazine with free advertising, all right? I'm gonna put up the address. I'm gonna put up the address, and then you're gonna write it down and write into them asking for a free sample of their magazine. Then you can find out how to advertise for free just by writing into them. All right, you probably don't want to tell them the digital mix of spy sent you. You don't want to tell them that because I don't think they know about me. And if you told them a, a spy sent you, right, I think they think you were a little weird. So just write them and ask the magazine about their free advertising TV technology. Okay, okay. For you people out there with the Amigas too, and doing video, Amiga video, Amiga video, AdVid magazine, get it? AdVid, okay? It's for people who got Amiga doing video. 
you don't know about it, once again, here's a number, tell them. Digital Mix of Spy sent you. They'll give you a free issue, free issue, okay? So if you're into a media and doing video stuff together, this is the magazine. Now you remember Annie, Kristen, and Karen on the tape, okay? If you want them, they ain't free, or right? you have to come talk to me, you know? It better be a legitimate video, you know, you want to use them for. Um, let's see if we can work something out, hey. Maybe, maybe not, you know what I'm saying? Because, hey, I like them on my tapes, you know what I mean? So anyway, there's the free contacts for now, and... Oh, man, I gotta get going. They're coming for me, they're coming for me. See you later. I was a little uneasy about showing you this effect in the first digital mixer videotape for fear it could possibly damage your machine. But Peter Utz, the great video author, assured me it was okay. If your source input is in channel two on your digital mixer and you take one of the spare record outputs and loop it through into channel one input, you can get some pretty weird and unique effects using the mix slider dissolving between both channels. Now, especially if you also use the superimpose function and its slider and background colors, you can get some even more unique effects. Also, don't forget to experiment with the paint and mosaic on channel one, and the effect will be even stranger. Now, our subjects were filmed outside at night, but this doesn't have to be the case. As a matter of fact, you can try this with any piece of video you have and get some unique effects. So let's review. You'll probably never need this effect, but if you push the picture in a picture button on the AVE5 while you're doing the looping, this is the effect you get. Here's another effect achieved by using the mosaic and superimposed slider with back color. <laughs> this could have happened to anybody else. Here's another digital key animation that you can use to superimpose video over the heart and you could use it in a forward or reverse pattern. This may be ideal for all those people doing wedding videos. Every so often, my image is broken up into a zillion pieces and put back together again through the magic of television. What's going on here? The transporter effect is one of my favorites and can only be done with the animation disc and an Amiga computer. Whew. For those without an Amiga computer, you can achieve similar but not equal effect with the animation alone that we've also provided right here in the video for you. Hey, where am I going? This is just too weird. Well, I'm off to other planets, I think. Here's the animation. For all the MX-12 owners who want computer-controlled accuracy, you may want to consider an external trigger for controlling the in-point and dissolve timing for the digital mixers. Now, that's for the MX-12 only. It's called a GPI controller, General Purpose Interface Controller. And you'd have to have a GPI edit controller, an edit controller that has a GPI port in it. Now, it costs about $400 to get your MX-12 modified. And um, you have to send it into Discount Video Warehouse. Feel free to give them a call. The other alternative for the AV5, though you can also use it for the MX12, is the GFI or General Finger Interface, okay? The cost is zero and it requires using your brain to time the incoming B-roll and release the pause with one finger, manually moving a slider with the other finger. You'll find this uh, method is less accurate, however it also is less expensive. Good luck and happy editing! That's all for the tape today. It was really fun to have you, and thanks for watching. And don't forget, we'll have more tapes coming out really soon. We'll send you a letter and let you know when they're available. So in the meantime, we're out of here. That is, if Kristen can get her lines right. So take care, and we look forward to seeing you again in the future. Bye. Bye-bye.
Thanks for joining us today in this video. And don't forget to get the Digital Mixer Companion Part 3. I promise to love you. And I promise to love you. With all my heart. With all my heart. And all my soul. And all my soul. Because that's the most important thing. <laughs> because that's the most important thing.